This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Canine crew, it's time to just sell the damn thing. Doberman Dan is revealing his contrarian formula for getting a rush of new customers, building your business faster, and making the highest possible profits. Go to JustSellTheDamnThing.com to get your copy today. Prepare yourself for the uncensored, nothing held back, no BS reality of how business and life really work. Doberman Dan is off the chain. Very recently, life has kind of sucked. Have you, ever, have you ever gone through those phases before, JR? Daily. <laughs> every morning. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> every damn morning. I, I should know better. I mean, why was I thinking life sucked? Well, it's, it's the same thing. I mean, we can go back to when I was a kid. I, I was doing stuff I didn't want to do. You know, back in the day, it was because I was forced to, you know, like, the government forced me to, to attend that government-funded youth indoctrination camp for 13 years, you know, or they would incarcerate me and my parents. Mm. That's, by, by the way, for the sheeple, that's public school. But you and I know what it really was, you know. <laughs> but nowadays, doing stuff I don't want to do, and, and I've continually fallen into this problem, is, is stuff to, to make more money. You know, like, oh, well, I don't really want to do this, but, but you know. I'm I'm gonna make more money, and apparently I'm not the only one <laughs> who makes this mistake. I hear this from a lot of entrepreneurs. Do you hear this from your your clients and your people you deal with, bro? We all go through that thing all the time. I, I think, like most people I talk with, and even most entrepreneurs, they think you know making money is going to make them happy or solve all their problems, or they or everybody seems to have this arbitrary number in their mind of when I make this much per year or when I accumulate this much money, I will be happy or I will fill in the blanks. You know, I'll be complete. I'll feel better about myself. Yeah, whatever right. it is. Um, it's never enough. And, you know, yeah, ex exactly. So they get to that point and they're like, oh, well, that didn't do it. So let me stack up some more. Let me do more stuff I don't want to do and deal with people I don't want to deal with to make more money. Cause then maybe, maybe doubling it. Maybe that was the, that's the key. Yeah. That's the ticket doubling that number that, that will finally make me complete. I'll be happy. It, you know what? For many people, it actually will, <laughs> you know, as, uh, as my mentor, Gary Howard used to say, having money solves the problems that not having money causes. But I, here's the thing. I have not been happy doing things I don't particularly want to do for money, even sizable amounts of money, quite the opposite. I was quite miserable because I, I figured out, like, I like the creation process of starting new projects, you know, new businesses or, or whatever, you know, working with a client to crack the code on certain things. But I do not like running a business. Like the, the, the starting of it is fun for me. The operational aspect of it, like the marketing stuff I'm good at and is often fun for me. The operational aspects of growing a business, managing a business, not my thing. Now, some people love that and they, they live for it, you know, running a large growing business. It just makes me miserable. So, so as a side note, by the way, ideally, I think what I'd like to do is partner with a, a PWM. That's, that's another Halbertism, a player with money who actually enjoys running a large, growing direct response online business. So let I could let him or her, whatever, take care of all that administrative stuff, you know, operational stuff that drives me crazy. And then I'll just be free to do all the marketing, you know, have the freedom to tweak and improve response from existing websites, offers, sales letters, stuff like that. De develop new products, new copy, new ways to extract money from the customer base. You know, I, I'm good at all that stuff, but it's really hard for me to do when I got to manage the business too. So I've, I've often, have you ever like thought about that? Like, man, if I could get a partner to handle the stuff I don't want to do, I could do the stuff I do well better. 
Yeah, Dan. Well, I've told you before, I'm in strategic coach. So they, the, one of the things is to learn to build a self-managing company. And I actually have that partner now. It's Rachel Cupcake, who handles all the operations. And I can just do the marketing and creating assets and sales. That sounds ideal to me. So I've I've had a, a, f- a handful of people propose those kind of arrangements, but it, it turned out like... <laughs> What it would have been, there's an old golf joke and uh, stop me if you heard this. Actually, don't stop me. <laughs> it's uh, the guys in the clubhouse having a drink in the afternoon and, and the bartender says to him, man, you look really rough. Did you have a bad day or something? Guy said, oh, yeah, I had a horrible day. You know, I was golfing with my buddy Fred and right on the first hole. He just dropped dead. And the bartender says, oh, my gosh, that is a horrible day. He goes, oh, yeah, it was it was terrible, man, because the next 17 holes, it was just hit the ball and drag Fred. <laughs> but I'm bumped. So <laughs> there's a there's a the double entendre there. There's a joke about how hardcore golfers are. But then it's part of my metaphor for what has been proposed to me, like the people who proposed that arrangement to me, it would have been hit the ball, drag Fred because they. You know, I, not only do I have to deal with all my inner screwed up issues, I, I got to deal with theirs and try to fix them while they whine, bitch and moan about stuff. So, Yikes. you know, I think I'd rather run a marathon while pulling a 200 pound sled behind me. It's it's just easier for me to do all this stuff by myself. But but hey, a girl can dream, can't she? Like I can dream that I I have somebody to take all that off my off my shoulders. But all that rambling was just to say that I'd finally come to the point where I realized I was miserable. So this summer, the beginning of the summer, you know, I had this epiphany that, hey, wait a minute, I'm miserable doing things that I don't want to do just because it pays me money. So I just decided to not do any of that stuff anymore. Obviously, there was a couple things that I had committed to that I had to finish up. But once those were finished, I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. The only thing I'm going to do is the stuff I'm really passionate about. So that's my that's my newsletter, the Doberman Dan letter, which is, you know, part of my marketing Camelot membership, which you can find out about at marketingcamelot.com. So I decided, yep, I'm going to do that. I'm passionate about that. And I'm, I'm going to do my my music stuff because, you know, I'm working on that solo CD, but I'm passionate about the newsletter because it's it's not just a business for me. It's not just a way to make money. It's it's basically how I'm leaving my legacy to the marketing world. So I invest a lot of time in that thing and I pour my heart and soul into it. And I think you can back me up on this, JR, that, you know, I'm not afraid to reveal stuff that other marketers and gurus, I'm doing finger quotes, are actually afraid to reveal, or in most cases, they don't even know. I, I, I more than happy to reveal that in the Doberman Dan letter. Uh, you know, I hadn't really thought about it, but maybe you letting it all hang out is the reason why I like your newsletter. I think that might be it. Well, I, so I, sometimes I, I said, I'm not afraid to, well, sometimes I am like, I read some of the stuff I've written. I thought, oh my God, I shouldn't say that, or I shouldn't reveal that. But then, then I always send it out anyway, because somebody once told me that when you get to the point where what you're revealing in your thing, whatever that thing is, your newsletter, your podcast, your videos, your whatever it is you do, that's probably the exact thing that you should be revealing. So, so I do that. So back to being miserable. I, I stopped, I dropped all my copywriting clients. One project that was making me a lot of money, but making me absolutely miserable, dropped that. You know, I just woke up at the beginning of the summer and said, you know, screw it all. I'm just going to write my print newsletter and the hell with everything else. Wow. And then that reminded me of one of my favorite movies, What About Bob with Bill Murray. Have you ever seen that? Long time ago. It's classic, man. Bob was this neurotic, multiphobic, but really lovable guy. He was he was just constantly scared to death and and consequently and because of that miserable. But he had this epiphany when a new psychologist that was the the part played by Richard Dreyfus told him to take a vacation from his problems. And then from there on, you know, Bob started getting over all his phobias and started feeling better. But so I had the same epiphany this summer. Making a lot of money is great, but it sucks if you're not enjoying the journey. So. I decided to take a vacation for my problems. I took a uh, Hollywood movie's advice <laughs> and I took a vacation for my problems. And I honestly didn't care what happened with all the other projects. I, I, I just decided the only thing I'm going to focus on is the Doberman Dan letter, everything else, whatever. 
And an interesting thing happened so far. The world here, I'm five months into this now, okay? Because we're recording this now, the end of October. The world hasn't come to an end. I haven't gone bankrupt. I haven't lost everything. Quite the contrary. Everything has pretty much continued business as usual. And the money just keeps coming in. And would you like to know why, dear listener and dear JR? Of course. Well, because like you have done, I didn't build my business and my income based on grunt work that's totally dependent upon me. I mean, obviously, yes, there's things that only I can do, but the rest of it, I built them on systems that do the work for me. Because when I declared my freedom from my J-O-B back in 1997, I engineered my entire life around being free. So having to constantly do $10 an hour grunt work to keep a business going is the exact opposite of that. That ain't being free in my most humble but accurate opinion. So, you know, sure, initially when you're launching, you you might have to do some grunt work to test things and get things going. But it is a huge mistake to build a business based on you continuing to do the grunt work. So so this summer, when I decided to scale back my working hours and just say go to hell to everything and take a vacation from my problems. Interestingly enough, my income just kept trudging along. I mean, yeah, it's true. At the, at the pace I was going, it's not going to grow that way, you know, but I was totally fine with that. I, I, I knew that any time I wanted to scale up and make more money, you know, I can do it. I just didn't want to do it right then. You know, I made the decision. I'm just going to focus on my newsletter. I'd rather follow my real passions, you know, the newsletter, play music, writing music, that kind of stuff, working on my solo CD. And, you know, when I do decide that, yeah, I'm I, I really am ready to make some big money again. It will not be done grunt work style like I was doing, you know, where everything is dependent upon me. Uh, all that writing, copy and all that stuff. Now, I'll find a PWM partner like I was telling you about earlier and partner up with them. So until then, man, I'm just going to continue pouring my heart and soul into my my newsletter, the Doberman Dan letter, you know, keep doing this podcast because that's part of the, the whole deal. And, uh, you know, you can't imagine how much better I feel. So I just got a, a quick word of advice. If you're still stuck in a J-O-B, I understand you, you really can't do this because you're not in control. I feel for you. I was a wage slave in a job I hated for 12 long years. But if you've been working your butt off simply to earn more and more of that worthless fiat green stuff, and you've been miserable. I'm talking specifically to the business owners, the entrepreneurs here. I give you permission to take a vacation from, from your problems. Just tell the world to go to hell and go do something you really want to do. Something, you know, preferably that you're passionate about. Besides, like, like we're saying, it's way better than paying some pipe smoking psychologist, you know, for therapy. Just, hmm, with, with patches on his jacket. And hmm, how do you feel about that, you know? Or or worse, resorting to some kind of drug to numb your feelings because you're in a situation that's making you completely freaking miserable. So if you knew you only had six months to live, would you be doing what you're doing now? Most people never have the opportunity to think about that. I I consider it a blessing that I was put into that situation a couple times. (laughs) It it was life-changing. So the problem came as I forgot about what was most important to me and got hung up with making more money instead of living the life I really wanted. So that's when I decided, hey, kiss my big white booty world. Doberman Dan ain't a slave to nobody, especially money, (laughs) you know? And besides, if you really understood the monetary system, I bet you would totally totally re-engineer your life starting tomorrow. So if you really want to make millions, I, I can totally respect that. If you hire like a guy like me, which I ain't for hire now, but if you do find a guy like me, he can help you do it faster than you think you can do it. But you better be pretty damn sure that's what you want because it's going to consume years of your life and most of your waking days. So, so my recommendation is this. I've been on vacation from my problems for five months now. And I'm not sure I'll really ever go back to how it was. But even if you're not in a position to take a long vacation from your problems, why not go ahead and take a week's vacation from your problems? Just get away from all the crap that's driving you crazy. And by the way, quit checking your damn email 
several times a day. <laughs> That's just stupid. And, and tell the world to go take a hike and then you go do something fun or something you're passionate about. I, I promise you, nothing is going to fall apart in only seven days. And if you only do that just for seven days, I bet you'll feel a lot better. And you might even get clarity on what to do after that seven days. Do you, how often do you do that, JR, where you just, you, you shut the door or you go somewhere and just shut out everything for a period of days? I uh, actually recently I got uh, Facebook and email off of my phone and my weekends off are truly off because I'm not on a computer and I'm totally away with my family. But I go, I have once a week, bro, like tomorrow we're recording today. It's Tuesday. Tomorrow's Wednesday. And tomorrow I have a motorcycle ride to a float, a float to a movie. And then I'll be home by the time Huddy wakes up from his nap around 3.30. I love it. I used, you know, I used to think that was goofing off. No way. And now I realize it's like the most important activity you can do. It's the sharpening the axe activity. Yes, it is. That's a good, that's a good way to put it. That's how, when you step away, you come back and what you need to do next is much clearer and you're much more sure of yourself and you have much more energy and focus. Yeah, for sure. It, and when you're in that, when you're on that hamster wheel, where you just keep doing either for the sake of doing or because you're doing it just for the money, you don't even have the time to stop and question why you're doing what you're doing, you know, or, or maybe you don't even have the time to realize how miserable you really are. I mean, money is abundant, so there's no lack of money. I mean, just look how much of this shit they're printing up. Um, <laughs> ways to get money is abundant. Just because you only know one particular way doesn't mean that's the only way for you. You know, but for me, it was a, it was totally essential for me to remove myself from the hamster wheel to figure out, like, I'm making really good money, but... This is not how I want to do it, you know, bro. I like Cupcake and I laugh because the way we have our businesses structured is that we're on salary. And if you were to look at what our salary is, what we pay ourselves, people would say there's no way that you guys could live the way you live and have all the time off on that little bit of money. But you, you realize that if you're living life, if you're chasing after like just doing the things you want to do. You can make it work and it doesn't take as much as you think. That's absolutely right. That's what I found. And I'm so thick headed. You know, I've had to learn this lesson multiple times. So that's why I'm encouraging you, dear listener, to take a vacation from your problems. Boom shakalaka. So what's up next time, Dan? Next week, we're going to talk about the five step formula to turn a failed business or a base hit business into a home run business. All right. Looking forward to that. Another off the sh <laughs> I don't even know the name of the show. Another off the chain show is in the can. <laughs> we'll be back in your earbuds next time. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed today's show. Canine Crew got a special treat for you. What we are affectionately referring to as the off the chain hotline. Tell us you love us. Tell us you hate us. Ask questions. We don't care. Just call. 321-424-6043 and give us a piece of your mind. This is the podcastfactory.com.